There's a little bit of mathematics here. This is maybe, folks, the most elegant chart available on the Bloomberg. This is the statement of capitalism back to the Depression. This is a Standard & Poor's 500. It's what's called an Ibbotson chart. And I fitted in there two moving averages which are beyond elegant. The answer is we go from the lower left to the upper right. But I would suggest, Mr. Hildenbrand, we're getting a little bit of help from central banks now. What is the influence of central banks on moving assets higher? Well, Tom, I'm impressed by this chart. You must have gotten up early this morning to prepare that one. Uh, look, I think if you overlaid a moving average or various moving averages of growth, you would see that uh, a fairly similar picture. Yes. So fundamentally, equity markets reflect, of course, uh, growth. And the, the job of central banking has been, since the crisis, to be very aggressive in taking the measures that allow us to kind of escape out of this uh, deflation risk or potential deflation trap. And I think that has now succeeded. Uh, and we are in a reflationary phase. And as you can see, I think it must be one of the shorter term moving averages. You can kind of see that inflection point uh, from at least from here, it looks like it on, on that chart. So I think central banking has deployed various measures because the crisis was so deep and the shock was so deep. It had to go much further than just lowering interest rates, uh, including into purchases of assets. So in a sense, it's an extension of traditional central banking, but has had the additional effect, uh, without any doubt, of pushing asset prices higher. That was part of the transmission mechanism. The reason why that was needed was because the, the risk of a deflationary trap was so great because the financial crisis was so deep.